whining country club morale and systems of delusion all across this great land of ours, as well as to catapult into motion the cog wheels, rotors, actuators, reciprocating levers, sprockets, cylinder ratchets, phase advancers, servo mechanisms, and whatnot of the entire bureaucratic trapparatus. Oh, honey, you're such a caution. 
lines of a blob of mad infested slime or goo at the bottom of a dumpster as distinct from, say, In spite of all that, the hungry big ones, the roach thing that sent me, were real enough, so I figured I ought to make a show of good humor and do everything in my power to extend my cordiality to the stinking little varmint. Or, at very least, affect sympathy for its cause. I thus scooped up the remains of a ham salad sandwich I'd left on my dresser a month before and offered it to the master of the universe as a token of my hospitality. How be it? Before he had a chance to accept my offering, Six more goat-headed roach-like things erupted on my bedsheets, and like troll bearers carrying a coffin at a funeral, they conveyed a three and a half by eight and a half inch cashier's check made out to yours truly in the amount of. Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Ten. Lust 
obsequious Cuda, in ignition of my attainment, so as to get them off my back and out of my face with their incessant nag piping, bitching, scolding,
would invariably be distorted, embellished upon, casquinated, vivisected, and hideously blown out of proportion, <laughs> and then materialized thereafterward, as if through some alchemism or voodoo hocus pocus. In tortuous tableaus of graffiti on the walls of not just the latrines, as might be expected, but also on those of the headmaster's office, frequently accompanied by scathing prescriptions authored by would be censors and bones. Those whom I once considered my closest confidants and intimados had turned out to be mouth friends at best. I want to say fair weather friends, but portraying them thus wise wouldn't be fully factual under the circumstance. hideous, pseudo-serial works for string quartet that I posted by express to the master of the universe once a fortnight, give or take. I soon ascertained how so, that irregardless of whether or no I sent my opuscules to him, he persisted in making out money orders to me in exponentially greater sums until, ultimately, I became one of the world's most eligible bachelors. <laughs> Ma- 
help friends and back friends, they gave me the cold shoulder without any conspectable qualms of conscience and spent most of their downtime initiating whispering campaigns in my honor. <laughs> Scrunched. And a 
milky white liberoid substance was squirting there out onto the floor. His esophagus had been twisted backwards and exposed to the elements, while his midsection had been sliced open and stuffed with his gizzard. Secondary grinders and all. Strident, angularly gra- 
grotesque and formlessly chaotic pandemonians of pure, unadulterated, neo-modernist wreck in the history of string quartet writing. Though my conscience was clear as a whistle, 
I sensed that some gravely critical element was absent from my id. I could not help but feel that the goat-headed roach thing had had all the answers to life's bewildering conundrums, and that his own existence had been cut short just at the very moment he was about to impart to me one of his precious turds of wisdom. I am convinced beyond the shadow of any missteps whatsoever that had I had the chance to spend but a minute longer in consultation with my benefactor, I would have been able to get to the crux of some deep and immutable truth wherewith I had been and still am seeking in solemn desperation to come to terms a certain fundamental something or other which to this very date eludes me. Whatever that certain something or other might be, and you can rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, it's not religion. I don't wish to afflict you any further with my sorrows and frustrations. So I think I'll just wrap things up on a cheerier note by saying that, in despite of the fact that I've rarely had a good chuckle over the years, there was one particular occasion I remember quite fondly that proved to be an exception to that rule. It happened some three quinquennials or so succeeding the forementioned blackside when I'd come across a stink-bug-sized obituary in a fly-by-night tabloid that made but a flitting reference to my aforenamed adversary having at long last been met with his nemesis. <laughs> Mr. Wayne Van Horn had choked on a pretzel.